Hello, this is Pastor Johnson from Temple Baptist Church, and I just wanted to um, make a short video to talk about this Sam Gipp situation. And Sam Gipp is an evangelist that has uh, been preaching around the country for many years now, and he uh, recently said some things that were quite shocking. Now, he's coming back and saying that he's been taken out of context, and he's uh, made videos, uh, you know, saying that the person who exposed this is a liar and uh, that, that, you know, it's being ripped out of context. Now, I just want to say, I watched the video in its full context, and he wasn't taken out of context. Um, it's, he only dealt with the issue for about, you know, three minutes or whatever, but it was not taken out of context. And, uh, you know, he said, well, he cut him short. He didn't show the next verse that he used. Well, the verse that he used, and you can go watch the video for yourself. Um, Anderson, S. Anderson, 1769, is a channel, and it's uh, uh, a link to it in the video here. But um, it starts around the one hour and 53 minute mark, if I remember correctly. Uh, he claimed that Jesus, his name, the Son of God, was never, God never intended his name to be Jesus. And this bizarre claim was made and he said his name was supposed to be Emmanuel, even though Matthew 20, 121 and other places, uh, Philippians chapter 2 says that God gave him that name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And <laughs> this was, it was just a bizarre statement to make. Now the man was preaching like a two and a half hour sermon or something like that. And so, you know, maybe he misspoke. I don't know. He says he, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, he's saying he's been taken out of context. He hasn't said he's mis misspoke at all. Uh, but here's the thing. He's saying, prove it. You know, I'm being lied about and all this type of thing. And he's saying that, you know, Pastor Anderson's taking him out of context. Well, I would say to him, why did you delete the video? Why is it that the only place I can go watch that video is over at Pastor Anderson's face or uh, YouTube channel? Why did you take it down off of the Northwest Baptist Bible Baptist Church or whatever? Why did you take it down all of the sermons that you had? Now, this is something I want to talk about for a minute. Okay, he said he said that that Jesus is not his the right name. Okay, he said, and you can watch the video. I'll link to it. He said that Jesus is not the right name to. That, that he was meant to be called. He also goes so far as to say that when Jesus comes into his kingdom, he'll not be called Jesus. We'll call him Emmanuel. Now, he has no scripture to back this up. The scripture he uses, it doesn't say it explicitly. And uh, you can watch the video for yourself, but it doesn't say it. He found a verse in the Old Testament where people say, you know, God is with us. And, uh, and he says, there is proof. They're going to call him God with us. Well, God has a lot of names. Jesus is the name above every name. Okay? When he comes into his kingdom. His name is Jesus. This is just a bizarre doctrine. Now, it's not hard to debunk this. And now he's backing away from this statement. He's saying, well, I didn't really mean it. You know, he took me out of context. He, he's, I, and his explanation made no sense at all to me because this was his explanation. Well, I was being ironic. Well, what, what, what do you mean you were being ironic? It, look, explain what you mean, and then mean what you say, and you know. And if you if you misspoke and you don't mean that, then you know own that thing and apologize. Don't just he starts out this video, and I'll I'll have to link to the time time stamp. I think it's forty three minutes. He starts out by saying, uh, in this sermon, I. You know, it's a pride is the biggest sin, and I'm glad I don't have a pride problem. I mean, you know, this is a joke I've heard all my life, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, you know the joke. It's it's this thing, you know, where it's like, well, I'm glad I don't have a pride problem. I've conquered pride, you know. Give me a break. So, anyway, I just, uh, let me just introduce myself a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm a pastor now for about a year. And um, I am, I come from independent Baptist roots, hardcore, right? I was... Uh, raised uh, in a home of a Baptist, independent Baptist pastor. He's been, my dad was a pastor uh, almost all my life. When he wasn't a pastor, he was working in a church in a ministry. And, uh, you know, we, we had all the Baptist fundamentals. You know, we were, you know, once saved, always saved, all those things. Um, you know, salvation by grace through faith. It's not of repentance. It's not of 
you know, works. It's not of any of these things. Now, my grandfather, same way, he was an independent Baptist missionary. He um, got saved as a young man, and, uh, you know, God called him off the farm and off out of a factory to go and be a missionary to the military. And so that's how we ended up in Jacksonville, North Carolina, the home of Camp Lejeune, the uh, military base there. And, uh, you know, he had a burden in the heart. I remember as a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, uh, going out and soul winning with my grandfather. We would stand out on the street corner in the red light district. I mean, it was rough out here. I mean, crazy Marines, just wild, all these types of things uh, going on around us. Bars everywhere. He had rented a place on the top story, uh, second floor, above a bar, next to a bar, across from a, a, you know, a music bar, strip club, I mean, all around us. And we would sit down on the corner. We had soul winners from the local Baptist church uh, and they would be upstairs. They'd have coffee and donuts. They'd have some uh, different games they could play. Uh, so there was this aspect of we were trying to, you know, get people off the street and help them, you know, give them an alternative to just being down there and involved in all the head shops and, the, you know, all the booze and the women and all the hookers on the street and all that stuff. So we would grab these guys, say, hey, you want to come upstairs? Um, you know, play a game of chess, you want some coffee and donuts and things like that. But we had soul winning rooms all over the place in there. Uh, they were just basically closets and you would take different guys in there. And, and as a young man, um, one of the things we would do, my granddad would actually kind of funnel people up. And so we'd sit down on the corner and we would just, you know, I would, I would take a gospel track and I would walk over and I would say to a person, you know, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you're going to heaven? Or I would say, my granddad was pretty rough and crass about it. He'd say, are you heaven or hell? Where are you going when you die? You know, and hey, praise God. I love that heritage. I still uh, ask that same question today to people. I still witness to people. I still want to see people saved. And I love that. You know, that's a great thing. Um, so I just wanted to, I just kind of laying that out. I, you know, when I was a little kid, I remember, you know, sitting on my daddy's knee hearing people like Lee Robertson and all these, Curtis Hudson and all these people. I was at, you know, Southwide Baptist Fellowship and uh, Sword of the Lord Conference and these different places. You know, I went to a Baptist Bible college. Um, not that I endorse that anymore, but uh, I'm just kind of giving you, you know, kind of my perspective on this. Now, I have, and comment below if this is something you've seen before. I, I was just blown away that this independent Baptist college, this Baptist Bible College, this Baptist, um, you know, this, it's uh, Providence Baptist College in, I think, Chicago area, uh, and uh, let's see, Northwest, I'm trying to get this right, Northwest Baptist uh, Church, Northwest Bible Baptist Church, and um, anyway, uh, they had this conference, and this, the whole conference, I mean, this was from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I think I got the facts right, morning sessions, you know, three hours, something like that, uh, two hours in the evening. I mean, the whole thing, they're inviting pastors in from all the area, and they build this as an anti-Stephen, Pastor Stephen Anderson conference. And, you know, they're claiming that, you know, Pastor Anderson's stealing flock, stealing people from other churches. They're pulling people, he's pulling people out. He's building his church, you know, in, you know, he's a, he's a, flock stealer, you know, and uh, he's teaching all these damnable heresies is what they're saying and everything. And, and it's just, uh, so Keith Gomez is the pastor there. Um, you know, Sam Gipp is the guy that's the evangelist and he's going to expose, I mean, they're going to spend, I mean, they're going to spend, you know, 20 hours just teaching and exposing Pastor Anderson. Now, what is it they got in their craw? So bad. I have never seen, I, I mean, I've never seen a Bible conference in a big church where they're like, you know, I've seen the obligatory missions conference, you know, uh, they'll have their obligatory revival meeting, Bible conference, whatever, but I have never seen them just say, this week we're going to, you know, spend a whole week exposing another independent Baptist pastor. We're going to go, we're going to go and expose, um, you know, Jack Hiles or Curtis Hudson or something. I've never seen that. It's, it's just really surprising. And so anyway, um, it, it's a really, I mean, he, Pastor Anderson, I, I'm just going to stop right here and just say how much I appreciate Pastor Anderson. Um, you know, I had never, like for a long time I should say, I've seen the world through a different lens than most of my independent Baptist brethren. Like a lot of them I agree with on, you know, the fundamentals of the faith, but 
you know, I, I never quite understood, you know, the pre-trib rapture. I never, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I never, you know, preached it, you know, sometimes or mentioned it in a sermon, but I, you know, it, it just something about it. Just I, I'll be honest, I didn't really preach on it the way uh, I think. You know, it was kind of a subject I would just avoid because, you know, it didn't make sense to me. Um, but I'll give you I'll give you another example. Uh, you know, I have been someone who's taken a stand. I don't vote for the lesser of two evils. I'm not into. I like what uh, I forget. I saw somebody on Facebook call them Fox News Baptist churches. I'm not vo a voter. I don't vote for the lesser of two evils. I mean, I can give you tons of Bible verses that say to avoid the appearance of evil, but I can't find any pragmatic Bible verse that tells us, you know, choose a lesser evil, choose this abortionist because they're less of an abortionist. You know, Do choose this, you know, wicked person because they're a little less wicked than the other person. I, I don't buy that. And, uh, you know, sometimes, honestly, a lot of the churches just make it such a big deal that I feel like I'm just almost, there's no even, I, I felt like there was almost no place for me because it was such a, in the independent Baptist movement. But I, I know that's wrong. I knew that was wrong. And, you know, what's the core thing? You know, soul winning and, and uh, doctrine and things like that. But just I mean, it's a major thing. I believe 9-11 was an inside job. And, you know, anyway, I'll, I was introduced by Pastor Anderson, or to Pastor Anderson's ministry um, by the, the weirdest place of all, right? The Daily Paul. Now, I supported Ron Paul for president back in 2007, 8, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I supported him in 2012. And I thought that, you know, as far as a politician goes, he was just about the, you know, he was an honest one, and I liked his ideas um, on a lot of things, okay? And, uh, you know, he lines up more with my politics and uh, as far as my kind of libertarian mind is concerned. And, uh, you know, I saw uh, on the Daily Paul, this now defunct website, I think, um, that, you know, there's this pastor in Arizona that's gotten beaten because he's standing up uh, for, you know, the Constitution at a um, border, a, a warrantless border checkpoint out in the middle of the, you know, nowhere, and they're just, you know, stopping people 50 miles from the border and doing an ID check. Now, I mean, this isn't Nazi Germany, you know, show me your papers, please. I, I mean, I understood what was happening. I see police abuse. I see overreach of power. I see all of this. And at the time, I was rooting for all these videos. These people would come up and they would refuse uh, to show their identification to these, you know, federal agents that ha don't have the right to stop innocent people. You are safe in your persons, papers, house effects, and lands against unreasonable searches and seizures. So, anyway, um, I saw that video of him beaten and tasered, and he made a video, and, and it was up on the, the uh, Daily Paul right away, and I, that got just millions of views, I think, at, at that time. And then, uh, you know, because he, he's bloodied he's just back to the church anyway i didn't i watched that video and i i thought that was really cool and i heard it on the alex jones show that he got interviewed i think it was and um that was pretty neat later on you know i see his name again and i'm watching a video and that kind of gave credibility to me because you know his preaching uh because of the fact that i i liked him i liked what he had to say about politics and some of the things i saw on, on the internet and then i found out he was an independent baptist and that's just that, that fired me up. I was like, man, this is all right. This, this guy's all right. Praise God that there's somebody in the Independent Baptist with the guts to stand up and preach this stuff in his pulpit. What a blessing. And uh, that was kind of just something that was a, my, the first blessing that he had. And then uh, with that, you know, I uh, ended up watching his film um, after the tribulation. And uh, I, I finally got around to watching it. And I was skeptical. And I... Um, you know, I just kind of was holding on to the, the raising, my raising, the churches that I had gone to all my life. And so I was kind of just hanging on to that thing. And uh, I didn't quite get on board at that point. And I was, I was just, but it did plant a seed of doubt. Um, because it's hard to argue with the Word of God. I mean, wow. But anyway, I'll tell you what happened. Um, you know, I do a lot of driving because I, I work um, at farmer's markets selling a homemade product that we make and we sell at the farmer's market. But anyway, I drive to different cities around here on different days of the week and peddle our products, you know. And uh, anyway, so I just said, you know what, let me download these MP3s of this study through the book of Revelation. So that's what I did. 
And uh, I went through verse by verse. I listened to it in the truck first. Then I went through and read the book of Revelation again, you know. And I, I looked at his, his timeline chart. And I, then I went back and I, I started, I told my wife. And she'll, she'll testify to this. Like, I said, I don't know if I'm pre-trib anymore. This is really kind of shaking my viewpoint. Like, it makes perfect sense. And that's, and that's, I don't know what else to look for than when the Holy Spirit, I'm reading the Bible and it's coming alive, it's making perfect sense. Like, it just was confusing before. And, um, I, you know, I couldn't justify some of the, the timelines and all of this stuff. And it's like, my mind is just, but then when he, he laid it out verse by verse like that, it just clicked with me. And I did my own study. I went through the book of Revelation like two or three times trying to, at first it was to disprove it, but then it just it just clicked, and I was like, all right. And I listened to the seminar. I don't know. I've listened to that probably three times through the book of Revelation, and um, I, I'm just, I was really blessed with that. And so that was, that was a place where, um, you know, I was really blessed by his ministry, and I feel like he really helped me. And he's an inspiration, um, you know, as far as uh, his zeal is concerned, um, his preaching, what I started listening to his sermons, and I started myself, right? I've been going to Baptist churches all my life, and I'm not ashamed to, to admit this. You know, I've read the Bible through many times, okay? But um, his hard sermons uh, and some of the topics he would cover in his sermons, Pastor Anderson, thank you for, you know, just hitting these topics that nobody you know, dared to preach on in the Baptist churches I grew up in. You know, nobody wanted to talk about these things. I love the, I love his uh, documentaries on birth control, on all these things. I'm just, I'm so thankful. And uh, we need people that are going to, you know, he, he should be held up as an example in independent Baptist churches for, uh, let's face it, he uses more scriptures in his sermons than most pastors do. You know, he's not giving you three points of poem and, you know, a feel-good story uh, and, and five stories about them, himself, he's giving you the meat of the word, and he's, he's, I mean, he's preaching, you know, good, long, meaty sermons, and it's a, he's a good example, you know, and uh, so anyway, I'm very thankful for him, you know, uh, he helped me put the, re the rest of the pieces together, I'd already, I'd already been going down this whole understanding of the Zionist Jew situation, but, uh, you know, his film, Marching Design, helped me put... Well, actually, um, his Israel Moments. Thank you. Big shout out to that. Because, uh, you know, I had already put most of those pieces together. I had done a study through the Bible on this. And then um, he helped clear up, you know, several things on that issue. And uh, I am I'm very grateful for that ministry. And I, I, it's, it's also nice just to have that resource. I can say, hey, you don't understand this. Watch this video. So, anyway, I say all that to say this. I'm I'm on his side on this, you know. Good night. Like these guys stand up, and they're going to claim they they stood up at this conference and they claim that you know Pastor Anderson's a flock stealer. All right. Now let me just tell you, he's not growing. He's a church there. He's not so winning. You know, he's not growing by soul winning. He's growing by you know pulling people out of other flocks and other places. Okay. Well. That's, look, there are different competing voices for people. I understand that. And so, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses are stealing people out of Baptist church, out of these type of Baptist churches, too. I bet Pastor Anderson's losing, you know, churches like ours are losing less people to the Jehovah's Witness cult than there are, uh, you know, than, than your church, Mr. Gomez. I bet you're losing a bunch out of there to <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses with that shallow, weak preaching you do. Um, so there's competing voices. People, you know, want to leave. They want to leave. Pa I've listened to hours of Pastor Anderson's sermons. I've never heard him, you know, encourage people to move to Arizona. But you know what I will say? If you're a cult, you know, because people are moving to, you know, relocating, and they're not just relocating to his church. I'm on Facebook. They're relocating to Texas, to churches of like faith, the churches in these areas. I've, I've had people calling me up, you know, talking to me about the area and, and thinking about relocating here. You know, I mean, it's not that anybody's trying to, you know, suck off, you know, all of the members from these churches. That there, there are people who just want, you know, Bible preaching, and they're tired of, you know, all of the lies, they're tired of all of the, the weak, anemic sermons, and they're wanting something real, 
And so, you know, they're moving to Arizona if they have to. They're moving to wherever, you know. And so, you know, I commend them for it. Um, you know, I don't, I, I've heard Pastor Anderson say it, and I'll echo this. Don't, you know, cause trouble in a church. You know, that's, I mean, if they stand up and start preaching that Jesus is not, that's not, G, the Son of God's name shouldn't be Jesus, and we're not going to call him Jesus in, in the end times, you know, then stand up and walk out of there. But if you, you know, if they're soul winning and they're doing the right things and they love the Lord and, and you know, they're, they're not right on the end times, you know, you stay, you try to grow the best you can and you deal, you, you go to church where you're at and you find the best church in your area and so on. And that's what he said, that's what I say, and we're not trying. But here's, here's the irony and here's the hypocrisy of this, right? Because this guy, he says, we're not growing, you're, you, you guys are not growing from you know, Arizona, you're growing from, you know, Chicago and from all these places where people are moving from to go there. Well, you know what? Pastor Anderson's not asking all the churches in America to send him his, you know, their best and brightest 18 to 22 year old, you know, where that's actually preached in the pulpits. And that's what these Bible colleges are doing. They're going around and saying, you know, you should be, you should go uh, to Bible college for at least one year. You should go to Bible college. If you love God, you should go to Bible college and get your doctrinal foundation. You should do that. That's what you should do. And they're pushing this idea. Well, you know, if, if Pastor Anderson is a, a cult because people are moving there, well, what does that make Providence Baptist College? I mean, you're asking people. You're soliciting people. You're putting out publications. You're putting out flyers and sending out, you know, 6,000 flyers to every church in America so that they'll know about when you're traveling singing group. And I don't know anything about this college, so maybe they don't do all of that. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, that's what Baptist Bible colleges are doing. That's the, what the college I, my college did that I went to. That's what West Coast and all these other colleges are doing. They're They're recruiting. They go around recruiting young people out of every independent Baptist. So maybe they're a cult, right? Well, hey, guess what? He called. He said Pastor Anderson's a cult leader because people are siding with him and backing him. Well, what pastor doesn't want their people to back him, right? Especially when the the person that's they're they're, <laughs> they're preaching heresy. These people are preaching heresy. And stuff. I mean, when you say that Jesus Christ is not the name of God in the flesh. I mean, come on. And so, um, it, it's just hypocritical. It's absolutely hypocritical. I don't, you know, it just blows my mind. And, you know, Sam Gipp, you're, you're wrong for telling lies about this preacher. Like, you should not do that. The Bible talks about false accusations being levied. Some of the personal things that you're saying in these videos, I watched that video that you put out, and I'm addressing Sam Gipp now. Uh, about Pastor Anderson and just just you know making up lies you know saying he's a millionaire saying you know talking about members of his church talking about things that he's done that he hasn't done and so on and uh, you know um, you say well you're a you're a you're a cult member for backing up he he addressed at the end of the video said you know why don't you you know if you're a pastor and you support Pastor Anderson you know. You get your marching orders from Pastor Anderson. Why don't you free yourself and become an independent Baptist? You know, well, okay, how about this? How, why did you have a Bible conference and spend, you know, get all the churches in, in that area, in that region to come out? And so you could rant for, you know, 20 hours against Pastor Anderson and not use, a lot, you know, very much scripture at all and not, not prove a thing other than that you're a fool. So, anyway, um, and as far as being a cult leader, a cult, a cult member, I, I mean that just it blows my mind, you know, that he would say that. And you know, I think when you're demanding that people, so anyway, um, sorry about that. Uh, they'll say, you know, he said, "Oh, well, Stephen Anderson's a cult leader." And, uh, you know, he doesn't back up what he's, his claims with Bible and all that, which is a lie. I mean, Pastor Anderson's sermons are logical, and they are filled with Bible, okay? And that's why they're so hard to argue, and that's why you're so upset about it. That's why you're having, you know, 
a 20-hour conference to dig in your heels against his, his doctrine. It's not his doctrine, it's Bible doctrine. But here's, here's the, the thing that I was trying to get at there is that, you know, you say, oh, I didn't say that. He's taking me out of context. He doesn't want to deal with the scripture that was given. Yet you, you don't actually explain what you meant, right? You don't go through and do line upon line and say, well, this is what I meant. I misspoke. Let me clarify. You don't do that. You just attack him and expect people to believe you. I mean, it's ridiculous. The claims you're making are ridiculous. And look, put up or shut up. That's how I feel about it. You know what? Why, if, he, if he's the cult leader, why is he putting out all his videos and everything is up front? He doesn't edit it. He puts it out there. You know, why is that? Why are you, why, why is the only place that you can watch that video in question where you called, you know, Sam Gipp, you called, you know, G you said Jesus, his name was not Jesus, that his parents did, shouldn't have called him Jesus, and that was a, a mistake, that was them rebelling, they, Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not. His own parents didn't receive him, and so they named him Jesus in rebellion. That's what you insinuated, that's what you said, and you say, well, I never said that. It was taken out of context. Why is the sermon deleted? Right? Like, you go through the website, Northwest, you know, Baptist or Bible Baptist Church website, and you have to go through a registration process. You have to sit there and go through all of this rigmarole, you know, and, and have your, your pastor sign off or give your, your pastor's telephone number, your address, name, and all this stuff. And, okay, fine. You know, you go through that whole process, and then all the sermons from that, you know, Pastor Anderson series, you know, that Pastor Anderson Bible conference, they're just gone. And you're saying he's a cult leader. Everything he says is on YouTube. Where, where, where are you? You say, well, he took me out of context, you know. Well, actually, the only place you can watch the whole thing in context is Pastor Anderson's YouTube channel, Sanderson 1769. So put up or shut up. You know, quit spreading lies, quit t teaching false doctrine, and then being wishy-washy about it, you know. And, and quit going around saying you're not prideful when you sit there and say something and you won't even back it up. You won't even... Anyway, I'm, I just put this out because, you know, this guy goes around preaching in a lot of places. A lot of people that know his name, he, he's, he's somebody out there in the independent Baptist movement. And honestly, I just wanted to talk about this because I've never seen anything like this. I can't believe that, you know, uh, you know, we have a disagreement on the end times, right? We have a disagreement, and we probably have more than one disagreement, right? you know, on some other things. But we have a disagreement on the end times. We have a disagreement on, you know, Israel's place in prophecy, okay? And that right there, this should show you the sacred cow. Many of the Baptist churches will kick you out if you don't follow, you know, the Zionist protocol and you don't follow the pre-trib rapture. And, you know, I mean, I do believe there is a little room for latitude in this. I think we can, you know, uh, I don't, I mean, I'm going to preach what I believe, but, you know, I'm not going to separate with somebody just because they don't quite understand it the way I do on the end times. Okay, but, you know, that's me. But they're going to have an anti-Steven Anderson conference. Um, it, I, I just have never heard of it before. I mean, this is a pretty big church and a pretty uh, well-known ministry. And uh, so I just wanted to kind of give way in on it from another independent. I'm an, I've been an independent Baptist pastor. I'm an independent Baptist pastor, right? Like, I don't answer to Stephen Anderson, okay? And I don't, you know, it, he has no connection. I've never asked him for any money. I've never asked him for any help. I've never done anything other than just be his friend on Facebook. I've never even met the guy. I just like his YouTube channel. So, uh, anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and just, you know, let you know how I felt about it. God bless. I hope you have a great day.